I am so excited about beginning today our eight days of prayer and fasting. These are days as the Rock family we have set aside to come together, to pray together, to believe together, to grow together. As we walk into 2023, knowing that our eyes haven't seen, our ear hasn't heard, I don't even believe it's entered in our heart, all that God has in store for us, for you, for your family. No, no matter the challenges that will come in this year, we serve the one who has already been there before us. And he says, come, I'm going to lead you there. And I'm going to lead, guide, direct. And, uh, and I'm so grateful for that. Today, as we initiate these days of prayer and fasting, each morning will be an eight-minute devotional from our board members here at the Rock Family Worship Center. These are men and women of God that are going to pour into our lives to encourage us for the day. In just a moment, Will Ford, this, this amazing evangelist. If you don't know a lot about Will, he's not only a dear friend. He and de Havilland Ford, his wife, are not only dear friends of Lisa and I, but they are leaders here at our church who pour into our lives. And I know he's going to encourage you in just a moment. You can go to his website. You can check that out. But I encourage you to do that. But what I want to challenge you with is that you would stay the course these eight days. We have prayer this evening at 5 o'clock here at, at all of our campuses. Come and join us for a time of prayer and worship together. Then on Wednesday evening at 6.30, we will have another time of corporate gathering of worship and intercession. And then Saturday morning at 8 a.m. from 8 to 9, we will be having another time of prayer and intercession. Then on Sunday, we initiate our summit. And I believe it's going to be a time of ministry to you, to your family. I believe it's, you know, when the priest was anointed for his role in a priesthood, there were three areas the oil was placed. One was on his right ear, one was on his right thumb, and the other was his right toe. The ear represented to have a sensitivity to hear the voice of God. The thumb, knowing what to let go of and what to hold on to. And the toe represented the balance of life. God wants to bring that in you. He wants to remind that to me. And I pray that we'll walk together on this journey these next eight days that prepares us for this year to come. As we come together saying, God, revive me. I love the passage in Psalm 85. It says, now bring us back to loving you, O Lord, so that your anger will never need rise against us again. Or will you always be angry on and on to a distant generation? O revive us. Then your people can rejoice in you again. Pour out your love and kindness on us, Lord. Grant us your salvation. That was a cry that said, Lord, I just want to be renewed, to be revived. Lord, just let my love for you be the direct reflection of receiving your love for me. Give me ears to hear. Show me what I need to let go of, what I need to hold on tight to. And give me the balance of life of following you as we walk this journey together. So I bless you today pray you'll go to the website. You'll see all of the resources that are there for these days of prayer and fasting. And I pray you'll join us each moment, each morning for one of our, uh, our board members as they pour into our life, getting us ready for the day. I bless you and your family in Jesus' name. Hello, everybody. Will Ford here. I want to say hello to my Rock Church family. In the middle of the fast, come on. I'm the first guy to get to talk to you about fasting. Uh, it's my love-hate relationship, right? Probably yours too. Uh, but honestly, I needed a little bit because I ate tons of oxtails and tons of greens and tons of turkey and everything else. Uh, sweet potato pie, all that. Thanksgiving and Christmas was very, very good to my belly. But it's time to fast. And honestly, I'm in the middle of a fast right now. 10 days in, and it's one of the best graces I've had on a fast uh, 10 now. I'm going to fast 40 days this time. Uh, I've done a couple of 40-day fasts, but I've never had the grace that I have right now to fast. I think there's grace on your fast too. The same grace that's on me, 
I'm releasing it to you. And you are going to have an amazing fast this year. Why? Because you need the preparation spiritually for all that God is going to do in you personally, for your family, and also for the Rock Church family. All right. So, y'all, we're all in this together. So, I wanted to release this to you in the middle of this fast. Let me give you some my thoughts on fasting real quick and uh, give you one of my first, first, my best definition for fasting. It comes from my friend Lou Engel, a friend of many of us uh, there at the church. But Fasting is this. Fasting is giving up the legitimate pleasures of this world for the extreme pleasure of encountering more of God. Let me say that again. Fasting is giving up the legitimate pleasures. Food is a legitimate pleasure, right? But sometimes it's good to forfeit the legitimate food, meaning the bread, bread itself. It's sometimes good to legit, to, it's, it's good to uh, forfeit legitimate food to experience the spiritual food from the bread of heaven himself. Jesus said that I am the bread of life. Listen, you can encounter the bread of life. We have food that others know not of when we get to fast, when we fast. I'll read you a fasting story that I think will encourage your heart. True story of a man named Raynald III and his brother and how they fought against each other. But it's a, it really talks about, to me, in this story, the things that get dealt with in fasting. Raynald III, a 14th century dude, in what is now Belgium, was grossly overweight. His Latin nickname, Crassius, means fat. Uh, Reynald's younger brother, Edward, revolted against Reynald's rule. Edward captured Reynald, but did not kill him. Instead, he built a room around Reynald in the Nuka castle and promised him he could regain his title and his property when he left the room. Yeah, this would have been easy for anybody else, wouldn't be difficult for most people since the room had several windows and a door near the size that any normal person could get out of, which was never locked and then it was never barred. But the problem was Raynald's size. To regain his freedom, he needed to lose weight. Edward knew his older brother, and he also knew his favorite foods. So each day, he sent a variety of his favorite delicious foods to his room. Instead of dieting his way out of prison, Raynald actually grew bigger and bigger and bigger. When Duke Edward was uh, was accused of cruelty, he had a ready answer. He said, listen, my brother is not a prisoner. He may leave whenever he wills. Raynald stayed in that room for 10 years and wasn't released until after Edward died in battle. By then, listen to this, by then, his health was so ruined that he died within a year. Check this out. He died within a year because he was a prisoner of his own appetites. That's what fasting reveals. It gets us to this place where we're no longer a prisoner to our appetites. Sometimes food is the one thing that we use to medicate pain in our life. Sometimes food is that one thing that we use to, uh, to uh, 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 cover up other stuff, we use it for entertainment and everything else. But when we cut those things off, those desire for other things, those are the things that distract us from the bread of life himself. In celebration of dis discipline, Richard Foster said this. He said, more than any other discipline, fasting reveals the things that control us. This is a wonderful benefit to the true disciple who longs to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. We cover up what is inside of us with food and other things. So the danger, the danger of eating is that we fall in love with the gift. The danger with fasting is that we belittle the gift and glory in our willpower. But fasting isn't the ends, but it's the means to feasting on the indwelling Christ in you, who is the hope of glory. All right. So let me give you just a couple of my favorite little fasting nuggets. I told you one, a fasting is given at the legitimate pleasures of this world for the extreme pleasures of having more of God. All right. Fasting also makes us thankful for God and not turkey <laughs> and all the other things we get to eat around, around the holiday season, but it helps us focus on Christ and not just Christmas. Fasting drains the power of consumer culture in our lives. Fasting makes us sympathetic priests for those who are naturally and spiritually poor and hungry. Then they will fast when the bridegroom is taken away. Fasting is a response to our longing for the return of our bridegroom, King Jesus, All right? Now, so I'm still blown away, listen, that the one that we should fear the most is the one 
who loves us the most, so much so that he'd rather die than spend eternity without us. And so when we fast, we get to enter into that longing. And honestly, there's something about that prayer and fasting that hastens the return of the Lord. All right. Uh, one of my students said this about fasting. He said this, um, if fasting from food seems absurd, then how absurd and tragic it is when we don't realize we've been fasting from God's presence. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with that. And let me pray for you. God, I just thank you for grace upon grace upon this fast. I thank you for the encounters God encounters gonna have. I thank you for dreams and visions in the night. I thank you for the supernatural being activated in people's lives. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are over people in the time of this fast. Thank you for grace for fast and the grace you've given to me. I release it to everybody at Rock Church right now. And God, we thank you that as we feast on your presence in this time, we're going to grow greater intimacy with you, greater fellowship with each other, and greater power as a church to do your will and release your influence in the earth. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say it. Amen and amen. God bless you guys.